Revelation chapter 20, we ended last time on the millennial reign of Christ when Satan will be loose for a season, he'll have a revolt against Christ, and they'll be destroyed, and that will end the millennial reign of Christ. Look in verse number 10. I want you to see the demise of Satan. This is one of the greatest verses in the entire Bible right here. Huh? And verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I say hallelujah, glory to God, blessed be the name of Jesus. Take that devil. That's what I say on that verse right there. Huh? But let's look at verse number 11. If verse number 10 is one of the great verses of the Bible, the last clause of verse 11 is one of the most horrible, horrible truths of the Bible. Look at verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Here it is. And there was found no place for them. The Bible says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And tonight I want to discuss the great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment. After the millennial reign of Christ will be the great white throne judgment. Now, let me just start off by saying this. The scripture reveals there are three judgment thrones. We studied the judgment seat of Christ. You find it in 2 Corinthians 5.10. And that's where believers will be judged for their works. We also uh, uh, mention, but you'll find the throne of glory in Matthew 25, 31. And then you find here in Revelation chapter 20, the great white throne. Uh, there are three judgment seats, but there are five judgments as recorded in the scriptures. And I say the first judgment is the judgment of the believers as to sin. And we were judged for sin at Calvary. When Jesus died on the cross, when he shed his blood to be our propitiation, uh, uh, the Bible tells us in Galatians that he took those uh, offenses that were contrary to us and he nailed them to his cross and took them out of, his, out of the way. You and I were guilty under the law. The law condemned us. Uh, there were offenses that we had uh, uh, done against the law and Jesus took all of those offenses uh, and he took our sins and he nailed it to the cross of Calvary. And when you and I were uh, believed on the Lord, repented of our sins, uh, were born again, uh, our sin was then judged at Calvary. Uh, same people are never judged for sin again. Our past sins, our present sins, our future sins uh, were all paid for at Calvary and they were judged at Calvary. I say hallelujah. Mm, we see that's the first judgment. The second judgment is the judgment uh, of believers as to works. That's the judgment seat of Christ. We'll give an account of the deeds done in our body, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Uh, and that'll happen when we are uh, uh, raptured out and we'll be before the throne of God, before we can put on the wedding garment of the marriage supper of the Lamb, uh, we'll give an account at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, I, I may have mentioned this, but you know, a lot of songs written about heaven, written about mansions over the hilltop, written about the, the streets of gold and gates of pearl and all those wonderful things. Uh, uh, but friends, long before we ever put one foot on them streets of gold, we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, I have a real hard time getting excited about streets of gold knowing I'm going to have to appear before Him and give an account of my life. So we see there's the judgment uh, uh, of believers as to sin at Calvary, the judgment of believers as to works, works at the judgment seat of Christ. The third judgment is the judgment of the Jews. 
That happens during the Great Tribulation period. That's why there is that seven-year period of purging and of uh, uh, the wrath of God being pour, poured out because uh, 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 Jesus came unto his own and his own received him not, but as many as received him to them gave him power to become the sons of God. Jesus came to the Jews and they rejected him. You remember the Syrophoenician woman that had the daughter who was dying? She came before the Lord uh, and the Lord told, uh, told her, said, you know, I've not come but for the lost sheep of Israel. And she said, even the dogs, either the crumbs of the master's table. Uh, and, uh, and he said, true. I mean, he called her a dog. Uh, but because her faith was so great, uh, he healed her daughter. But he let her know, I'm not come for you. I'm come for the Jews. But the Jews rejected him. And they were looking for the Messiah to come and, and take over the throne and rule the world. Well, he, he's going to do that at his second coming. We told you that. They didn't realize he was coming as Savior before he came as Lord. And so they rejected him. So the, during the great tribulation period, they'll be purged. They'll have to pay for their rejection of Jesus Christ. We know that even still today, the Jews are God's chosen people. He still has the promise in the word of God. He's never revoked it that he'd bless them that blessed Israel and curse them that cursed Israel. And so uh, they're still God's chosen people. And out of the great tribulation, there'll be 12,000 for each of the 12 tribes of Israel that'll come out, that'll, that'll become tribulation saints because uh, they did not partake of the mark of the beast. They rejected that, and they put their faith in whatever institution God will have during the great tribulation period to come to him. So the judgment of the Jews is during the great tribulation. The fourth judgment will be the judgment of the nations. That'll be at the throne of glory. It happens after the battle of Armageddon and just prior to the millennial reign of Christ. You find it in Matthew 25, verses 31 to 32. He'll judge the nations and how they dealt with Israel. And then the final judgment that we find here in Revelation 20 is the judgment of the wicked dead. And it's here at the great white throne judgment. Now, let's notice a few things about these verses. I want you to notice the description of the throne. John says in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne. Now, when you just read that, you just, I don't know about you, but I get, you know, the ideal that there's this great throne, and it's white. But there's much more than that. You see, this throne is great because it must be large enough to have the seat of the Lord, but there are also the seats for the four and twenty elders, the twelve uh, patriarchs of the twelve tribe of Israel, and the twelve apostles, and then it also... Hello? Did somebody get a phone call? Huh? You had the 12, 420 elders, but it also must hold the bride of Christ. This is going to be a great throne. And you see, the Bible makes it clear that we will judge angels. Well, when's that going to take place at the great white throne? We will be there in the throne. So it's huge. It's white to show, you know, it's a radiant throne that reflects the holiness of God. And see, all those in the throne have now been glorified, have glorified bodies like in the Son of God, would be just like Him. It's going to be a great, white, radiant throne. We see the description of the throne. I want you to notice that the diadem is recognized. Look what it says. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. You notice the attention's not on the bride. It's not on the 420 elders. The attention's on him. Who's the him? The Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? The Bible says in John 5.22... For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, 
Who will be sitting on the throne? The same one who created everything. The Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? I think of that message I preached one time. Remember the, uh, the woman with the issue of the blood said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. I preached one time on the hem of him. Well, it's him that's going to be on the throne. John said of all that he saw, what stood out was him. Can I say he's the one that always stands out? Hmm? Uh, we see not only the description of the throne, but we see the diadem is recognized. Now notice the dissolving. Look what it says in verse 11. I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Look what's dissolved. Heaven and earth. Them tree huggers going to have a bad day that day. The new green deal ain't going to help them that day. Now think about it. Earth is gone. The heavens are gone. That means God's abode and the heavens. All the planets, the stars, all it's gone. Hmm? God spoke it into existence and he's going to fry it up. Peter tells us this in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 7. He said, But the heavens, plural, and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. In verse 10 of the same chapter, he says this, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, uh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, uh, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Hmm? Heaven and earth is going to burn up. Now let me give you a little theology according to Brother Doug. Why would God take the very abode that he has dwelled in, Brother Clint, since the alpha of time and burn it up? Why would he take this earth that he made and burn it up? Well, can I say, this earth became tainted by sin when man chose to sin. And the earth is the domain of the prince and the power of the air, the devil. So he's burned it up because of sin. But that same devil has also went before the throne of God and accused the brethren. So that sorry no good devil has uh, 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 had his feet trod upon uh, the glory, the abode of God. So God said, now we're burning it all up where there is going to be nothing that no more will be tainted by sin. Every place that sin has ever been will be eradicated now think about this there are people I've heard say well when I stand before God I'll present my case now think about this those that stand before the great white throne judgment will not have anything to stand upon because it's all gone there is no heaven, there is no earth, they're going to be in an outer space uh, environment with nothing. So what is holding them up? The presence and power of God. You see, He is the one who created the elements. He is in control of the elements. You remember uh, when He appeared to the disciples after resurrection and in the upper room, they had the door locked and He just walked through the walls? See, elements does not affect God. God affects the elements. The Bible says that through and by Him all things consist. He keeps everything together. That day they'll be standing before Him with nothing to stand on. Hmm. So we see the dissolving. I alluded to it, but notice the doleful reality. Look again in verse 11. And there was found no place for them. It's one thing to be out of place. If you're a true believer in this day and age, you're out of place. You don't fit in this world. 
We are a peculiar people. It's one thing to be out of place. It's another thing to have no place. Hmm. See, those that stand before God, lost without God, there's no place found for them. That's a tragic, tragic, tragic thing. Now, if you don't get anything else I say, I want you to get this right now. Some of your loved ones will be standing there. Some of your neighbors, some of your co-workers, some of your classmates, folks that follow you online are going to be standing there without God, with no place found for them. That's why you need to tell them. That's why you need to be, be concerned about them. That's why you need to pray for them. I need to pray for God to put things in their path as barriers that hinder them so they'll listen to God and get right with God before that day comes. Because if you don't tell them, if you don't live right before them, if you don't warn them, then at that day when you're standing in the throne of God, their blood will be required at your hands because you didn't tell them. Can you imagine looking off over there and seeing one of your loved ones being sentenced to the lake of fire and they look at you and say, why didn't you tell me? Now I'm going to steal a little thunder from next week's lesson, but let me help you with something real clear right here. Go back and study it. The tears haven't been wiped from our eyes yet. That don't happen until chapter 21. Hmm? Does it matter how you live? Absolutely. Does it matter how much time you spend talking with God and in the Word of God and witnessing versus how much time you spend in this world? Absolutely. Say, well, I'll, I'll give an account at the judgment seat. You sure will. But then you're going to face people that you didn't witness to. a doleful reality no place found for them now I want you to notice the defendants at the great white throne look at verse 12 and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. We find the defendants standing before God, first of all, will be the dead. Every person that has died and went to hell will be called out of hell and will stand before the Son of God. Then they're going to be cast off into the lake of fire, which is the second death. One writer said it this way, if you was born once, you're going to die twice. But if you've been born twice, if you got born again, you're only going to die once. Hmm? But it's very clear that the dead are going to stand before God. Those that died natural deaths from the time of the garden, to those that died in the church age, to those that died during the tribulation period, all of them that died without God are going to stand before the, before the Lamb of God. But the dead's not going to be the only ones judged that day. Look with me over in Revelation chapter 11. Now I dare say, and I challenge you to find this written in any commentary, because you're not going to find it. Look at chapter 11, verse 18. 
The Bible says, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged. Now, when's the dead going to be judged? At the great white throne. Did we not just show you that? Now, let's look on. Uh, the time of the dead that they should be judged, that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. So we know the dead's going to be judged there, but we also find here that it says there's also going to be rewards given to the servants, the prophets, and to the saints. Now who's the servants, the prophets? That's Old Testament saints. You see, my dear friends, they're not in the bride of Christ. Who's in the bride? We brought that out. The folks that got saved by grace through faith after Jesus resurrected, those that come through the church age. That's the bride. Well, what about them Old Testament saints? The bride's going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. But the Old Testament saints, they're not the, the Lamb's bride. They're Jehovah's wife. The Old Testament saints have to be judged too. Where are they getting judged? At the great white throne. The saints of the, pro the, the servants of the prophets. But then it talks about the saints. Who's the saints? And to the saints. That's the tribulation saints. Over in Revelation chapter 7, there says there's going to be a great number that no man can number. Plus, there's the 144,000 Jews we already talked about. When are they going to be judged? They're not judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Many of them are being slain for their faith during the time we're being judged. Uh, when are they going to be judged? At the great white throne judgment. You see, there will be defendants of the dead, but there's also defendants who are the delivered. Those uh, who will get to go to glory... Mm, but hadn't been judged yet. They'll be judged at the great white throne. The defendants. Now, let's look at the discovery of evidence. You can't have a trial without discovery of evidence. There's got to be evidence brought. Well, the Lord being the righteous judge and the just one isn't going to condemn anybody without any evidence. We'll go back to Revelation chapter 20. Look in verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and here it is, the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now look at verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life. Now the dead are going to be judged according to their works. It will be revealed unto them that day every sin they ever committed. It will be revealed unto them every opportunity they had to put their faith in God. And it will be shown to them that they never put their faith in God and their name's not in the book of life or what is commonly referred to as the Lamb's book of life. There is no record of their salvation there is a record of their sin, there's a record of their rejection, and they'll be sentenced as according to their sin, and they'll be doomed. Those who sin greatly will suffer more greatly in hell than those that don't sin as much as others. They'll all be judged, every man according to their works, and sentenced thereby. But notice two times it mentions the books and then the book of life. Now why really is there a book of life? If you've got evidence showing that somebody's guilty, you don't need to show them that they're not there. 
Why is the book of life mentioned? Because of the delivered. Because in case they're wondering, well, why does that crowd get to go? Well, look right here. Here's the book of life. Here's when Moses put his faith in God. And here's when Moses believed on the Lord when he preached unto him when he led captivity captive. Moses entered into the joy of the Lord. Here's Elijah. Here's Elisha. Here's, and he goes right down the line uh, and shows them in the book of life where they put their faith in the Lord. All the uh, tribulation saints, here's where they rejected the mark of the beast. Here's where they put their faith in God. Here's when they were recorded as their salvation. Here uh, is why they get to go in. The discovery of evidence for those who don't get to make it and those who do. All happening at the judgment. Now let me just say this. For those that believe in the general judgment, they take things out of context. They think that day is going to determine whether or not you get in or not. No, whether or not you get in or not is determined in your life and whether or not you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've heard the gospel, my dear friends, uh, 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 that day you won't be judged to get in. If you've heard the gospel and believed on the Lord, you'll be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. But if you've heard the gospel and rejected the Lord, you'll be judged as one of that crowd headed to hell. Because again, Second Thessalonians tells a strong delusion come on you where you believe a lie. If the Lord takes His church out of here and you haven't believed on the Lord, you're doomed. That day, again, it's already settled, but then the discovery of evidence is revealed unto them. Hmm. It's important to understand. And I dare say you'll find... No commentary mentioned about the tribulation saints or the Old Testament prophets and Old Testament saints being judged at the great white throne judgment. That's the only place they can be judged. And Revelation 11:18 shows us that's where they're judged. Hmm? Then let's look at the damnation. Look at verse 14. The Bible says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Now think about this. We know that for the believer, the sting of death has been removed. O grave, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? Or O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? There is no sting of death anymore in the life of a believer. We have evidence of that in Stephen's life, where they're bouncing stones off his head. He's, he's, he's calling on the Lord, receive me into thy kingdom. You know, receive my, I mean, lay no sin to the charge and into thy hands. I mean, he's ready to go. He didn't feel the rocks. You don't feel the sting of death when you're a believer. You go to sleep to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. You just wake up in glory. Death is no problem for a child of God. You say, well, I just don't want to die. Well, that's a natural uh, reaction. It's also a good indication it's not your time to die. Because God gives you grace for crossing over. But for an unbeliever, death is a horrible thing. I know Brother Phil's read that book I've got on the death of saints and sinners. And sinners die different than saints. There's records of some of the most vilest of sinners, people who denied the Lord and fought hard against the cause of Christ. When they go to die, they cry out the demons are carrying them off into hell. It's a traumatic event. Matter of fact, it's so traumatic that when a, a, a sinner dies, they've started doing things like give people morphine and put them off into hospice and drug them out of their mind so that you can experience what they're experiencing when they're crossing over. It's a terrible thing to go out of this world without Jesus Christ. Can I say this? As horrible as that is, that's being thrown in the lake of fire. And think about this. For the last 6,000 years, when people die without God, they go to the center of the earth in a place called hell. Now, all we know about hell is the rich man in Luke 16 said it was a place of torments. And that he would, that Lazarus would be sent and just give him one drop of water to cool his tongue for he's tormented in his flame. It's a place of torment and torture. And that's thrown in the lake of fire. Death and hell 
are a piece of cake compared to what's coming for them. The lake of fire. Where the fire is not quenched. And if you're a big fan of his, God bless you. But Billy Graham was a liar. He said there is no fire in hell. Well, that's not what the Lord said. And then he said they're going to a lake of fire. Hmm. I mean, go read Mark chapter 9. We're talking about hell. He says the fire's not quenched. And then it's going to the lake of fire. We see that it says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There's a lot of people in this day and age who go to these feel-good churches like the Vineyard and like Crossroads and like First Church and like uh, whatever or Fellowship of Believers is now called Seven Hills or you know the, the Happy-Go-Lucky Church, whatever you want to call them. They'll say, well, you go to one of them hellfire damnation churches. Well, that Bible's a hellfire damnation Bible. If you die without Jesus, that's all you've got to look forward to. The lake of fire and being damned forevermore. One of the greatest Baptist preachers ever walked in shoe leather, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, said this. He said, if in hell they had the hope that one day hell would be annihilated and they could escape. He said, revival would break out in hell. He said, but it cannot be because they are forever, forever, forever lost. There is no hope for them. They're damned forevermore. The great white throne is one of the most sobering doctrines in the entire Bible. Because those we do not reach for Christ are going to end up there. God help us do all we can while we can. Because Jesus said it this way. When the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? You've got people around you and contemporaries and peers around you who put more faith in what Fox News or CNN News or what people in the White House or what they say than what the Bible says. People have more faith in Grouchy Fauci than they do the Lord Jesus Christ. No, I, I understand why many don't have faith. Because for the last 50 years, there's been a lot of sorry so-called Christians in this world. Been a lot of sorry so-called preachers in this world. There's been a lot of people that have made a mockery of the Word of God and of the things of God. So you and I, what a purpose in our heart, we're going to do it right. And we're going to shine as lights in this dark world. And we're going to have faith that causes us to be bold. We're going to have faith that causes our backbone to be like a saw log. And we're going to, having done all to stand, stand there for. And let people know that there is hope and His name is Jesus. Let them know that He will save them and change their lives. I'm so sick and tired of people saying they're saved. And then their mouth is filthy. They still talk about partying. They still talk about all kinds. You know what? Jesus saved me from all that stuff. If you don't have a salvation that don't change you, then you don't have salvation. Uh, his own testimony, Brother Phil, says he used to be a foul mouth guy. He's not a foul mouth guy. You know what comes out of his mouth now? Praise unto Jesus. Why? When Jesus gets in you, he'll come out of you. Are you listening? We've got a bunch of folks that are anemic spiritually because they do not make the things of God real in their lives I'm sick and tired of people telling me about them going to church and them having not a spiritual bone in their body just not spiritual they can't tell if God's a moving or not moving you know how to become spiritual I got good news for you it's not something you can flip on and off and have overnight 
You've got to get this book, get on your knees, and learn to discern when God is speaking. Most Christians are so shallow, they can't even tell you where the books of the Bible are. They couldn't tell somebody how to get saved if they wanted to. They couldn't show them a verse in the Bible. You know why? Because you're lazy. You can operate a telephone and know everybody's business throughout the world. But you can't get in that Bible and show somebody what Jesus said about being saved. We wonder, what's wrong? Why do, why do they not have confidence in us? Why should they? We complain and cry and whine about the same things they do. Hmm. Why don't we just show them what Jesus can really do in a life? Hmm? The Bible says the eye is the gate, or not the Bible, you know, the eye is the gate of the soul. Philosophy teaches that. You can look in people's eyes and see if they're really in tune or not. But the Bible does say what's in your heart will come out your mouth. When you hang around people and they, all they talk about are ball scores or the weather or, you know, the news or the, and they never talk about the Lord, they're just telling on themselves. So what kind of impact can they really have? I'll close with this. Everybody remember Lot? Now the Bible says Lot, Lot was a righteous man who vexed his soul. But when the warning came for Lot to get his family out of Sodom, he went and told him, and his daughters and sons-in-laws mocked him. Let me ask you a question. Are you lot, like Lot? Or are you like Job? Are you like Lot? Or are you like Enoch? Are you like Lot? Or are you like... James and John, the sons of thunder. Hmm? Time's coming down to where this thing, it's, it's time to get real. The rubber's meeting the road. It's time to get serious about God. I'd highly encourage you to get that CD from Brother Andy Wells. And I'd highly encourage you to start mapping out your day around Jesus. Because what's going on in this world, it really don't matter if Jesus don't come first in your life. And the more you hang out with Jesus, the more he's going to show out on you. If you don't believe that, just look at Moses. Hmm? When was the last time people took notice that you'd been with Jesus? God help us. I've said this many times over the years. Your life is one of two things. You're either a stepping stone for people to get to Jesus or you're a stumbling block keeping them from him. I'm not much, but I sure would like to be a stepping stone, wouldn't you? Well, that's up to you. So, what say ye? The Lord says, who do men say that I am? He says, who do ye say that I am? Well, what say ye? What are you doing to impact this world? the cause of Christ. I'm done. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come and pray for somebody that's lost. Maybe you need to come pray and say, God, show me somebody I can have an impact on their life. Maybe you need to come and pray and say, Lord, I've been a sorry Christian. Help me be a better Christian. I don't know. But I know one thing. He's coming. I mean... Everything is being fulfilled in the scriptures right before our eyes, and all the signs are pointing. He's coming soon. Are you ready to meet him? They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, sobering times to think about people we know not ready to meet you. Lord, I remember years ago a preacher saying, the reason we don't get upset about people dying and going to hell is because we don't put faces on them souls standing before the great white throne. Lord, there are folks we know not ready to meet you. God, break our hearts for them. God, help us to be a light. Help us to be different. 
Help us to make a difference and help us to show them the difference you can make in them. Now, Father, bless this invitation now. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.